<laughs> right, I've I've done Mark chapter 13 and that was my main goal. Uh, in the corner is um, a quilted Canada historical gift to my mother. Um, <laughs> I made it up to my happy place. I literally like hiked up the field on two uh, a crutch and a walking stick belonging to my mother. And before I talked, I was determined to um, uh, read a chapter of the Gospel of Mark. And I did that even though it went into two parts and I'll try and knit it together as one. But, like, I'm laughing because... <laughs> um, I made... I, I measured out a quarter of the field, which is what my father left me in his will. And my sister Amory threatened to squat the field, you know, like, and put the horses on the field and you know, go for squatters' rights and pay a nominal fee into the estate and the estate could be in um, uh, probate for years. And I'm 66 and my health is really bad. So I'm not going to neglect to come and enjoy the field. You know, I'm just not. I'm uh, Like, you know, it's the mountain on... I saw a lovely quote, it's like, don't say it's the man, the hill you're willing to die on. It's that, I think it was Owen Benjamin said, it's the hill I'm willing to plant on. You know, and like, I have ambitions to grow, like I could, I could, um, I could get planning based on a horticultural uh, endeavour, enterprise. Um you know, and I really would like to grow vegetables and stuff. But anyway, I um, every day of, of trying to establish a homestead or reclaim your land or whatever is... um, <laughs> Every day has a challenge. And the last time I came to the field, which I've got a little bit graveled, the entrance, I drove in, like, front ways. And that was fine. I was able to reverse out. But then I thought to myself, um, let me reverse in and then it'll be easier to drive out. So I did my parallel parking. <laughs> this is the theatre. Sorry, I dropped the phone. This is the theatre of the absurd, right? I, 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 I did my parallel parking, but I, I reversed a little bit badly too far in. Almost, well, I did touch the neighbour's gate fence, but I didn't damage it. I just touched it. And I realised my gravelling is very inadequate. Um, and I have breakdown assist, so I I don't know whether to ring breakdown assist or go and knock on Tom Foley's door or Fergus Fanning's door or any of, like, most of the neighbours on the Black Road absolutely are lovely and supportive. You know, so <laughs> I think I'll go and knock on the neighbor's door and say, I'm just a little bit stuck. Could you just give me a little bit, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit of a toe out of the field? I'm sorry I find this so funny, but I feel free out here. I feel free. Nobody can hear me. I can just talk to the fields, you know, talk to God out here. Um. So, or I could call Breakdown Assist and they would just come and tow me out, but they might say, you know, we'll be an hour and a half. Um, and I, I don't know. I really don't know what to do. <laughs> but as I, like, I pulled my car away from the neighbour's fence because I really want to say to this neighbour that bought my house without knowing it was my house, my plans, my design, you know, I felt like saying to him, you know, if you want to, um, if you want to secure your 0.7 acres that my father stole off me and sold you, you know, you're welcome onto my land. Just come onto my land and fucking secure it. But since I came here last, somebody has been on my land and put all these fucking 
posts in, ready to encroach upon my land. <laughs> and it reminds me of neighbours having feuds for like, I don't know, 50 years about like you just stole six inches of my land. No, no, you stole mine. No, I'm going to shoot you. No. <laughs> John B. Keen, the lad. It's like, you know, like, <laughs> I left only a 12-foot driveway up to my acre. Or short of an acre, you know, but almost an acre. I, I made a 12-foot entranceway. And now the neighbours, likely, have put posts up, you know, that might make it eight foot. <laughs> So I'll actually have to plough down their posts or buy a camper van that's very skinny, you know. <laughs> and I still have to deal with the fact that when I walk down the field on my crutch and my walking stick belonging to my mother, I have to figure out a way to get my car off the gravel, which I want some more gravel, because I want to make a gravel driveway all the way up, you know, like halfway up the land because uh, I'm not able to walk very far. But, like, even with the bit that I've gravelled, I should be able to drive in and out, and now I'm stuck. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I'm, just, I'm just laughing, I'm just laughing. This is like... You know, we could be in danger of imminent nuclear war. We've got a mass um, immigration crisis. <laughs> it's like, you know, Jesus is coming back soon. So I don't want to make idolatry out of my almost acre of land. But it is my happy place. <laughs> And it's where I can laugh and laugh and laugh and nobody hears me, you know. But I think now I either have to phone. <laughs> I either have to phone breakdown assist and say, oops, a daisy, I'm stuck, you know. <laughs> I'm stuck trying to reclaim my land as a sovereign as a sovereign. <laughs> um, or I have to knock on a neighbour and just say, look, throw a fucking rope out, will you, and pull me out of the field and I'll find a different way. I'll either do, um, you know, parallel parking, <laughs> reversing better next time. But, you know, I, I think about uh, a cable car or a quad bike. <laughs> <laughs> you, I don't know if you see the theatre of the absurd that I do but this is my happy place like I'm so I'm so delighted that instead of coming up on one crutch I can actually mountain hike you know I think something happened there right something happened there let's have a look uh, somebody's messaging me. Oh, somebody's calling me. Okay, anyway, look, that's enough. That's enough, but I'm that, I'm ridiculously joyful, even though I'm stranded. <laughs> I'm stranded up my field. All right, and I just want to say one more thing, like, this field was originally 16 acres, like the 65 acres that were given back to the Irish, you know, after the British robbed everything, but they gave them back little 65-acre small holdings, but they gave them back in a way that was difficult. So they'd like be like a 16-acre field this side of the road, a 16-acre field the other side of the road, and a 16-acre field you know, a mile up the road. Um, and um, so originally this field was 16 acres, which my father made me walk every boundary, you know, and pick the stones and all the rest of it. But my dad 
And, you know, my dad was not a good man, but there's trauma bonding and I loved him. And my dad insisted on walking the field regularly. So, and he would not take a panic button. Like, he would not submit to a panic button. So he would go walking the 16-acre field with greyhounds or um, Springer Spaniels, German, German short-head points, whatever. And they would take the legs out from under him or whatever. He would fall and he would be gone for hours. And then he'd reappear and he'd say, like, yes, I fell over and I laid still for about an hour and then I figured out to roll over and then I got up again and then I made it home. <laughs> And nobody could nobody could stop him walking the field. <laughs> and nobody could persuade him to put a like I I had a bad fall in this field a few months ago. And like I was thinking, who would come? Nobody would come. <laughs> and all I could do was uh email Sabine and say, I'm 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 on my I'm on I'm I'm flat on the ground in the field. I can't move. Uh, and um <laughs> I don't know what he, the only thing I could think of was to email Sabine and say I've fallen over and I don't know what to do and I eventually made it back to my car and adrenaline can get you home even if you've got a broken knee a broken ankle whatever adrenaline will get you home all right love you guys <laughs> I just this is my happy place what can I say